And then we're going to talk about the Warren Commission. And then we're going to talk about the Secret Service agents that served the White House during the Kennedy assassination, specifically Clint Hill, Roy Kellerman, and William Bill Greer. We will add some others. We're going to talk about the House Assassinations Committee of 1976. That's the investigation was reopened in 76 to investigate the President's assassination and what their conclusions were. We're going to give you some tidbits on the Kennedy assassination and some Lincoln-Kennedy coincidences. So we'll start with the Zapruder film, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. It's kind of an interesting story. The Zapruder film. Now, as we've said many times, the only full recording of the assassination of President Kennedy that day in Dallas was done by Abraham Zapruder, and he was a dress manufacturer in Dallas, and his office was in Daly Plaza at the Dow Tex building, just like it sounds, Dow Tex building. So he was very close to Daly Plaza the, the morning of the assassination. So again, he is a dress manufacturer, and his office was in the Daly Plaza area across from the Texas School Book Depository in the Dow Tex building. Now what, what happened on the day of the 22nd November is Zapruder had positioned himself on top of a four foot concrete block on the grassy knoll. Remember that grassy knoll was the area on the other side of the president from across the street. In other words, the same side as the Texas School De Book Depository. And if you go to Daly Plaza, someday I hope you do, you'll see the exact four foot concrete block he was standing on. So the depository is here, the road is here, and he's standing on top of, of that particular block. Now he filmed the entire assassination with a Bell and Howell 8mm camera. This is the exact same camera that he used. Bell and Howell 8mm. And he just stood like this. I don't really want you to push any buttons, I'll pass it around, because it's got film in it. But basically just like this, if you can kind of take a look through it. The film is in here, maybe I'll take a second to show you. But you can see film in here. Obviously this film isn't any good, but this is exactly the same camera that he used and the exact same film that was used. Again, it was a Bell and Howell 8mm camera. Bell, B-E-L-L, -L, Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L. -L. But this is the exact camera he used. Bell and Howell. Very, it, was kind of a, it was kind of an upscale camera, kids, at the time. It was not a cheap camera. It was actually a very good camera. I'll pass this around, but be kind of careful with it. Focused it like this. Okay, look through it like this. Kind of weird, but you can look through it and pass it on. Not, not easy to hold. Good point. Now, the morning of November 22nd, Zapruder went to work just like he always did at the Dell Tex building. And when he first got to work, he had decided not to take the camera. He just decided not to take it. So he didn't bring it with him when he first got to work on the 22nd. It was when he got to work that his assistant, Marilyn Sitzman, urged him to go home and get the camera and film the president's motorcade. So he decided at first not to do that. But then his personal assistant, Marilyn Sitzman, urged Zapruder to go home and get his camera. He, she thought he ought to take the time to get the camera and record the president's motorcade. Why do you think she did that? Kind of think about what Nellie Connolly said when she talked on the, t on the DVD we showed about those letters and why she decided to put them into a book. What's that? Well, who did they? Who did? Who did? Mrs. Conley want to read those? Her grandkids, and that's what Marilyn Sitzman said. Go get that, Abraham. Film the event. You can later show that to your children and grandchildren. That's not going to be something that happens every day. So he took her advice and went home and got his camera, and then took her with him to Daly Plaza to get a good position to film. So again, he decided not to bring the camera. Marilyn Sitzman talked him into going and getting it because she thought it would be a great event and he might want to show it to his children and grandchildren someday. 
He went home, got the camera, grabbed her, and headed for Daly Plaza. Now, why did he take her with him? Well, he, he suffered from vertigo, which is kind of a fear of heights, even six, you know, even four feet up. And so she basically held him from behind while he filmed because he would get dizzy when he would get up on any kind of height. So he suffered from vertigo. And he had Sitzman go with him so she could stand behind him and just make sure he didn't fall off of that concrete block while he filmed. So again, what he's done is he's left his place, he's left his house, his residence, gone to work at the Daltex building, been talked into going home and get his camera, goes home, brings his camera back, grabs Marilyn Sitzman, his assistant, and they head to Daly Plaza, and he positions himself on top of a four-foot uh, concrete block with her behind kind of steadying him, and he films the entire assassination on film. The entire thing. Okay? Now, tomorrow, I'm going to right off the bat show you the Zapruder film several times, and then we'll tell you what Zapruder did after he realized what he had filmed. Okay? Any questions? Give us a good start. Uh, yes? Is it Sitzman or Sitzman? It's like a S I T Z in the end. Okay, I gotta see who's here. Here, who's he? Is Zach the only one not here? Yeah. Zach's on full rest. Like he. Let me in this. You guys got you got yourself nice on camera. Nice job. <laughs> Two of the biggest knuckleheads in class.